The following podcast is a Next Level production. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Robert. And this is going to be a review of Terrificon that was held in Uncasterville, or Connecticut, in at the Mohegan Sun Casino on July 30th. And 31st, depending on Rob, because Rob went a second day, even (laughs) though it was a three-day convention. I only could go the one day. But we had a great time uh, going out there and looking at everything now. Mind you, this was a convention that I've gone to twice before. Had a great time before. I have only had one really bad instance, and that was based upon uh, just before the pandemic, where uh, I had an issue with my tickets, how they were treating people. They, they had a lot of people. In this case, this was the first one since the pandemic, and there was a lot of people there, and we all had a great time. Uh, so, Rob, you... This is your first convention and for some time. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, this this is going to be more of a treat to you to like (laughs) divulge your thoughts and tell us what you thought about it. Because me, I've been going to conventions since 1994. Right. So I've been it's, it's a regular thing and exercise for me. Now, mind you, this is probably my third or fourth convention since the pandemic has been coming to a close or hopefully come to a close. Right. Uh, But they, to me, it was like, okay, we're back in rare form again. It wasn't overtly crowded to me, but nonetheless, I still had a great time. So what was your initial thoughts of the convention? So like you were saying, um, I, I haven't been to a convention in a while. And so I've never been a big conventions person, not because I don't like them, but it's just, I never just had time to go with, you know, to them. When I lived down in Florida, mm-hmm. I went to a few Star Trek conventions and I went to like maybe two of them. And then when X-Files really blew up, <laughs> Uh, which I think it was what the set no when the the first movie was about to come out, which I think it was like the end of the third season or fourth season. I'm not sure, but it was one of those. They had this traveling convention for X Files, which was crazy. Yeah. Um, but my my biggest thing with conventions has been well, the biggest thing I've I've been to has been the Comic Con in New York, and I think I told you that story how I got a ticket for that Mm -hmm. which which is a little nuts um basically i paid somebody in the last day that he was going home 20 bucks or something like that for his uh (laughs) for his His pass pass. yeah (laughs) and he was trying to like well how about you know 40 i was like dude you go home with 20 bucks or you go home with a piece of plastic and he's like well i guess 20 bucks it is (laughs) <laughs> so, and that's how I got to see uh, Comic Con. Everybody tells me it's like wrong way of doing it, but but that's what I could compare this one to. Um, and this one actually, I mean, the people seem energetic, which I thought it was great. Yeah, uh, I thought that. Um, I mean, again, I haven't been to one in such a long time. I mean, the way it, it seemed, you know, properly organized. Uh, you know, not too many people to. Uh, the one thing I saw, not too many people worried about having masks on. You know, and I'm talking unless you were cosplaying, but I'm just saying, you know, like for COVID reasons. Uh, and the two days I went, the second day just seemed a little slower. But other than that, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my thoughts overall, because this is like I said, my my fourth one since. Uh, obviously, I'll be going to more that are coming up. I won't be going to the Mid Hudson one, unfortunately, uh, because there's really not much there to be spoke about. Uh, Ming's going to be there. So, you panelers that really want to go see Ming Chen from Comic Book Men, you're more than welcome to. It's the Mid-Hudson Comic Con. It's coming up. It's going to be towards the end of August. So, he'll be there with a bunch of wrestlers, but they're not very well known. And it's a lot (laughs) more comic book based, so I don't think it's going to be such a huge thing, but he asked me, and I might show up just to say hi, and that's about it. 
but uh, honestly, this one was very cool in a sense. It engaged and grasped my attention of the fan of comic books, pop culture, all the cosplay uh, effect that's there too that I like to watch because I love that aspect because I just like seeing people get dressed up and put the right. effort in. And uh, the celebrities that were there too because there were very much a celebrity encounter there between the people you had three people from the orville you had tim daly you had yeah joe pantaleone you had the guy who voiced the uh lion o from thundercats you had a variety of celebrity there that could yeah. appease any fan so uh the orville to me was something that i was looking forward to go see but i only got to really see anything in passing as I was going to the bathroom, as I was waiting for Rob, and I was just, and then Adrian, Pe Adrian Pilecki, uh pulled me aside, going, "I love your shirt," and yes, I wore my Panels to Pixels podcast shirt, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so I was there, and she did point that out, but she had a mask on, and I said, "Oh, thank you, I love you, you're great." Uh, I'll probably stop by later. Well, which I didn't, but her line was very long, so right. I'm glad that the fans are out there embracing the celebrities and their their fandom with the celebrities that they want to meet right now mind you there was of all things we had tim daly who we you know rob knows i know as well as uh the batman himself from the animated series kevin, kevin conroy Conner. yeah and kevin had a long line the woman who voiced wonder woman we had phil lamar who voiced green lantern as well yeah. And uh, a lot of people's lines were varying, but I could see, you could tell the major fandom at that point. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> who they were going to see. <laughs> <laughs> you have uh, you have celebrities there that, of course, you know, are, I would say, more well known in, uh, because of their um, work on television or film. Mm -hmm. And most people were gravitating, of course, towards the one and only um kevin conroy <laughs> because of course he's batman yeah so it, it kind of tells you a lot about you know fandom um and how fandoms you know where it steers them i mean you can have like the best celebrity i think in the world <laughs> there but if he has nothing to do with anything that's fandom he's just there <laughs> And He's just there, and I I seen that before. And you're you're talking. I went to a uh, it was a Monster Mania, and it was Dolph Lundgren. Oh, of all things, really. <laughs> and Dolph was there. His line was very short. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! But other people were very popular, like people who like. I, I think at the time Carrie Fisher was still alive. Okay. And her line was out the door. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's Carrie Fisher, man. <laughs> so I I got out of line for Dolph Lundgren because for years I wanted to see Dolph and I wanted to right. say, hey, how are you? Rocky IV, the original Punisher, how are you doing? <laughs> you know, and I finally got yeah. that. I got a quick uh, selfie with him and got an autograph, or whatever, and got to talk to him for like a few moments. Oh, He's cool! Very kind and very generous. Now, my very you... smart too. Oh, extremely smart. <laughs> uh, and Carrie Fisher, I had bumped into years before, but never got an autograph or a photograph or photo op. Oh man, at all. So I kind of like uh, in passing, I literally was standing in front of her table when nobody was going there. And wow. she goes, Hey guy, how you doing? I was like, Hey, I'm like, oh, having a good time. Yeah, I am. She goes, you interested in the photo? I was like, mm, not at this moment. I might come back. She goes, okay, perfect. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, mm -hmm. it's <laughs> no, wait, I wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was the weirdest scenario. I was there with my friend Stacy, and she was just like, and I said, well, we should go back. Why? Because she's like, no ass on my, no, no, no grass off my ass. And I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, I was like, I, we, we, by the time I went back, the line was huge. Oh, my So God. it was sporadic that day. Never went back, but I should have. But, you know, the, oh, the fact dude. that I missed out. But the interaction, <laughs> just talking to her while waiting online for somebody else. Right, right. That 
probably wasn't deemed as popular. You know? Man, I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> I would have forgotten the line and sat down and talked to her. <laughs> but it was the funniest conversation I had right. at a con because it's in passing. I've had that before. I think I went to like a Big Apple Comic Con or a Big Apple Big Apple Comic Convention. That's in right. A, it's it's like a small church hall that they have in Man- <laughs> downtown Manhattan. And I bre- I dragged my friend back in the mid nineties. At the time, comic conventions weren't such a huge thing, but this was small enough. You only paid like eight bucks to get in. Right. And then you had more comic book people there. You had more artists. Todd McFarlane was there. Oh, wow. At okay. the time, because it wasn't that popular. It was a smaller con. And, you know, San Diego was still big, but right. certain artists were still struggling. Uh, Evan Dorkin, who did Milk and Cheese, uh, who I knew from Jim Hanley's universe, uh, you had a whole bunch of other comic artists like i think eastman and laird at the time were still together and they were both there oh. i i was standing online and of all things that i was standing online and this is a great memory too for me for a con i uh i literally was standing online for the guy who gets choked by darth vader in a new hope <laughs> the imperial oh really that's uh that's it was, a nice it was 10 bucks for the autograph and he did a picture with me for free. Listen. So, if you come can, on. Come on, man. You're part of you're part of movie history. It is such a well-known scene. Yeah. The fact that you could just monetize, you know, all And of I it. actually we <laughs> recreated it. It's him choking me. But the fact is I was standing online for him, but yet I'm standing there my friend Jared's behind me and at the table next to us is like I'm like I didn't even pay attention. It was the guy who played Enos from Dukes of Hazard, and there he was in his Enos uniform. Wow! So just a, a bit of memory, things that you go through. But the guy goes, he looks at Jared. He goes, "Hey, hey, how you doing?" He goes, oh, "I'm doing okay." You know, I was Enos, and my <laughs> buddy Jared goes, "Oh, great for you!" And then we just keep moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. and my buddy Jared's not really too much into that stuff. But he wanted to walk around, hang around, and look at that stuff because he thought the toys were co- pretty cool. He was like all into at the time. He was into like collecting GI Joes, Star Wars, right. and stuff like that. But the the encounters that you do get, and you know, to get back to Terrificon, I thought with the overall environment at this particular convention, I really enjoyed it in the sense that the fandom as far as the cosplay and we saw a lot there rob there there was a lot of cosplay. it was a lot uh, a lot more than i thought here's the whole thing i'm a fan myself i never understood the uh the uh, the cosplaying thing that much <laughs> and sometimes you see people just walking in and you know you're a fan yourself, but mm-hmm. you, you you're like, wow. I mean, the amount of time you put into this just to you know come For to a only show about eight hours at most right. that yeah, you're at a con, or th- you're there the whole weekend, maybe sixteen, right, twenty four at most. But you know, so it's it's it, it was interesting seeing you know, and you see all types of people, you know, yeah. cosplaying and stuff like that. But it is, uh, I would say, you know, it's it's an art form in itself. Yes. And even though I don't think I will ever do it, but, you know, it's uh, <laughs> I definitely respect it enough to say that, hey, you know, uh, it's creative. And, hey, if you're a fan, you want to show it, go right ahead. You know, more power to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, basically, in a nutshell, I think those were our overall initial thoughts. But let, let's move into more critical thoughts. Now, sure. you, this is your first convention in a long time correct did you have any any critiques based upon how the con was run how it was structured everything laid out mapped wise right um i mean i would say the and again since i haven't been to one since uh you know you know new york comic con and i believe that was i don't know i'm gonna say when avengers first came out when was that <sighs> 2000 around 2010 i think yeah so (laughs) it's been 12 years i guess um so that's my whole thing on it was okay so like the the panel for the justice league voiceover cast 
Yeah. Oh, at least when we got there, I guess it was already announced or something like that. But I'm not sure how they schedule these things. Like they didn't make it. No, I don't know if somebody in a PA is supposed to say, hey, you know, because in this they case, they did have announcements. They did. Did they? Okay. Yes, they did have announcements. Uh, we went to Tim's table and then somebody at uh, the handler said, hey, Tim's at the panel now and Phil Lamar and everybody else were gone as well as right. Kevin Conroy. That whole thing section was blank but usually they do have an announcement over the pa saying hey terrific connie's blah 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 we're right now head over to theater a and right in this particular venue and then you could go uh there's also the uh convention booklet which gives you your map and i, True. Look at I, I didn't map. I, I didn't grab one of those you know yeah. to uh I just kind of like, I think I just followed you around and say, well, you know where you're going. So I'll just yeah. follow that way. <laughs> and I actually pulled out the map because I was looking for uh, my friend Kirk, Kirk Manley, who's there. Right. So that is nice. The fact that it it's laid out properly so you could find people who you want. Right. Now, right. mind you, they do it have, they do have like an artist alley, but with certain merchandise companies, they have, it, it kind of got mixed up because... I think this was a little bit rushed to some degree with certain merch areas because people are used to, because it's such an annual thing, people right. have usually the same table uh, site or location, and you know where to get them. Right. Uh, in this case, Kirk kind of was like three weeks before they had to finalize, and he had to rush it, and he wasn't exactly where he was the last time I was there, but he got... Uh, Two stalls worth, which he needs right, with right. the amount of work. And if you remember, he had a lot of stuff on his. Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah. yeah, he did. So uh, he requires that. So he had to pay that up front and to see if he could get that money back with the sale of his merchandise and his art that he sells. Right. And to, to talk about that, too, because we get, uh, you know, you have Artist Alley. It wasn't really much of an Artist Alley. It was literally, you had the typical generals that were there you had jerry ordway uh, a few other of the dark horse series comic artists that were there as well right centered right before where the celebrities are usually that's where you know so those people pay prime numbers or prime money for that to get that right or they're very coveted because they are known within the comic industry so they get those particular ones so if you go every year you know Oh, he's going to be there. I got to go there. Right, right. And you do, and you're able to get there. Like um, uh, Perez was there one year. Neil Adams was there. Neil Adams had literally like the size of like three boots at one point when oh, I wow. went and I met him. Right. And now, mind you, the man ha makes a lot of money or made a lot of money. <laughs> and the thing is, without that there, and this is the first year without the man himself, Neil Adams. There was more real estate for people to take up for merchandise. Yeah, uh, it seems like um, the mo and you know it's funny. Uh, every it's not funny actually, but every other every other week, I'm always seeing something about somebody in the comic book industry passing away. Yes, and we're getting to that point where yeah, a lot of these uh, legendary uh, creators are you know um, up there in age, and you know we're going to be seeing a lot of them you know unfortunately uh, pass away, but. Those were the the pioneers of yes. like you know of a lot of the stuff that was done, and so we're gonna see less and less of those people in cons, of course, because of health reasons or because they're just too, you know, they're not here anymore or something like that. And even though I think the new the new guys, I don't know, I mean they'll they'll get you know they have also their their tables and their signing and people you know like what they're you know what they're doing but the ones who really started it all i mean are the ones that are actually leaving us which is kind of sad it is sad um i'm looking forward to the next time larry hama is going to be at a at a con that way yeah, joe man yep <laughs> uh as well as jim lee oh cool um, i actually i have a friend of mine that he i believe that he uh he he knew jim lee um actually no as a matter of fact well a friend of mine in florida that i believe he knew jim lee but um my comic book guy who you met there yeah uh, yeah he actually knows jim lee and he's you know since he was an editor in uh, dc yeah yeah and uh those those artists are still around go to them 
Now, mind you, I made the mistake of going to one convention years and years ago. Mm-hmm. And who was there? The one and only Stanley. But the line was huge. You had to right. wait for literally a whole day to get to Stan. Wow. And I missed out on that opportunity. And I should have went, but I didn't. I didn't no, go. I got to meet Stanley, and not through a convention for uh, comic books. It's a convention for uh, graphic artists. Um, it's the largest graphic artist convention in the world. I think it's uh, it's called um, uh, Seagraph. Uh, so that's what it's called. Hmm. So pretty much the entire world descends onto this uh, convention, and it's so big, and it's for so many days. It's almost like a, like a Cedia type of thing. Or um, for those of you who don't know who, what Cedia is, that's actually a <laughs> organization that uh, that promotes a lot of the new technologies that are out there for uh, from smart homes to home theaters and stuff like that. Yeah, but you know, and so. Stan Lee was at this convention and he was signing posters for a um, a comic book that he was doing, but that had nothing to do with Marvel or DC. Hmm. So I still have that poster signed by him. But yeah, I met him. I met him there, you know, and it was just like, oh, okay, you know, and well, you know, he got annoyed at me because I asked him for a second, you know, autograph on another poster. <laughs> he was like, he had that annoyed face. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got to at least that's as far as I I, I got to meet Stanley that way. <laughs> yeah, it it's it's really I always say it, take the opportunity if the opportunity is there. The only thing that I had critical to talk about the uh, the con was the rushing of the panel that you and I both saw, which was about Correct. the Justice League. Now, mind you, they could have at least did a cutoff point for Q and A. And they would roughly know it's like, okay, if it's an hour and a half, we'll do a half hour Q&A. Right. Rate how many, because uh, I know you're kind of like, this is your first one after a long time. You're like, get to the point. You know, some of the people <laughs> are just, I'm not sure of the question. It was like, oh, right, that right. was a wasted question or things of that nature. But you have to realize some of these people are anxious and they haven't had this opportunity really to speak to these people. Right. Then you get those typical hounds that are out there that, are not just there for the convention, but they're there at the the celebrities' table at least five times that weekend, and then they'll <laughs> still go to the right. panel and saying, uh, uh, "Yes, yeah, sir." Uh, there was this one line that you said, um, uh, and that's when you're like, uh, "Can you rush it along? Get to your point." <laughs> yeah, no. Why exactly. couldn't you say this at the table? But you know, and or you hear the same question twice, and that's. With me over the years, I, I try to prep certain friends that don't know about cons. I usually say, hey, uh, if there were a celebrity in that and feel uh, like some sort of screen or film, say, hey, uh, is there something that you would have taken from that particular movie? What was it and what did you take? Oh, right. okay, you got that. Or more artistically, uh, how did you get into character? Did you listen to any particular music that, that we should be looking out for right. that influence your character getting into that role for a particular scene. Yeah. But a lot of people are just like, um, um, <laughs> you know, you get that. But yeah, the one we, thing I, I had a like lot you, of yeah, like you were saying, like, and I, I remember telling you, I was like, you know, it, it seems one, it seems kind of rude for whoever the moderator was to just say, yeah, okay, we heard that or you know what? Or move on. Cha- or move on. <laughs> you know, and it was just like, wow, okay. I mean, if I was like the last people there, I, I will actually, honestly, I would have gotten off the line. I would be like, no, you know, I, I don't want to be treated like a yeah, rush. Like cattle. It, yeah, like cattle. <laughs> so I thought that part of it was not the. Um, which, the- which I said, yeah, like if they had just organized it to a point where people had, like the celebrity had enough time to answer and then they could move on and they could go back to their table. Because right. literally, that's what they're doing. The panel is there for maybe hour, hour and a half, depending on how long it is. And the moderator asks general base questions overall with their experience of whatever they're discussing at that point. Right. And then after that, it goes to, which usually is the most important, which is fan questions or Q&A. All right. And a lot of cons that I go to literally after 15, 20 minutes, goes right into Q&A. Hmm. Because it's all about the fans. Because right, right. honestly, without the fans, there wouldn't be the actor 
doing what they're doing at the convention or the convention having a convention at that point. Correct. So no, I think that um, yeah. I think also that if somebody's going to, you know, if you're going to say, OK, we're going to have Q&A. And, and like you were saying, normally we have, let's say, half an hour or whatever of Q&A. Mm -hmm. You know that every question, think of it as, OK, by the time the next person gets on there, just one whole minute already gone. Mm hmm. Think about the question that they're going to ask. It could be a two second thing that they're very quick on asking the question or it takes them a minute to actually get, you know, get it out, get it off their chest. And then it's then the reaction of whoever is, you know, in the panel, you know, and their explanation, which normally takes, I don't know, maybe two, two or three minutes or it could take half an hour, <laughs> depending yeah. I mean, So somebody has to kind of plan say okay so listen we're gonna do this by i don't know the first 10 people online or the or by raffle or something if somebody wants to you Correct. know do yeah. you know something like that so then they could just you could control that ask the proper questions and not make it feel like it's you know so rushed mm -hmm. and and that was the only that was my biggest thing it was like it just seemed very rushed at that point um were there other panels Oh, there were other panels. Uh, I think Jerry had done one for the comics that he was doing at the time that weekend. Okay. And uh, there was an Orville one as well from the cast from the Orville. Oh, okay. So uh, they had one for Thundercats, too, because the guy who voiced Lionel was there, who we right. got to say. Uh, I think Joey Pants did one as well, because oh, Joey okay. Pantaleone was there. Right. They were laid out in the scheduling of the book. Right, uh, right, that they get, and I know you kind of passed along because you kind of were rushing in, but you know, <laughs> to it, it's one of those things that I'm out of habit. Literally, I just go right there saying what's free to me here that I could pick up at the table that says Terrificon, right? And right. I grab it. They had a free poster too, but I was just like, nah, I don't want a poster, yeah, I just want the scheduling person. thing. Uh, you have a free comic, I'll take that, but they didn't have that this time, right. Uh, they had stuff there for sale, which is like T-shirts specifically for the event itself, which is fine. Right. Uh, they also had somebody there was pretty much like info. They'll give you info of where certain things are if you're, un un you know, unaware. Oh, okay. But, you yeah, know. You one of the things that, uh, like you were saying, uh, for me, like just what you were just saying, you know, um, vendors, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that many ven like vendors in the sense of like uh, sponsored vendors. Like, no. when but then again, I'm comparing it to Comic Con because mm -hmm. that's the last one I saw where you saw Mattel there, you saw Hasbro, you saw you know because they also wanted to show off their stuff. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see any of that, and I was like, oh okay. I mean, I would have thought you see something like that, and I didn't see somebody selling like let's say the hot toy stuff where like you know you normally see the really premium action figures and mm. and you know maquettes and all these things so didn't see any of that there i saw one gigantic booth of pop figures which okay <laughs> <laughs> so and but, also my yeah. whole thing on it too was vendors like you know usually you go on like on the last day sometimes you get people that they cut you a a deal because you know, it's their last day. So, uh, and mm -hmm. that's, I think, is very well known throughout the, the industry or people who know. Uh, but not a lot of people wanted to give uh, deals on the last day either. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, wow. Hold on to it. I think they have gold. Yeah. So, so those were my things. Well, uh, the, the funniest thing that you talk about when you said about that, when um, about like vendors and you're talking about Mattel, Hasbro, Hot right. Toys, things of that nature. The one thing I did see, just not to, uh, be overtly critical, but just to let people know, this is a national convention chain. So you did have that national fudge company that's there. They had two boots. Okay. So yeah. that's amazing. They they are very popular amongst all conventions, as well as the root beer station. Right. I'm forgetting the name of the company, but if they pay us or they give us anything free when we go next, we'll we'll definitely plug you. But uh, <laughs> literally, you they they are at every convention. They were at Fandemic right. Tour. They were in Walking uh, Walker Stalker. I've seen them at Fan Expo in Philly. Right. I think I've seen them at a, a like a Fangoria at one point too. So they're becoming they're national. They go everywhere. Oh, wow. So you get the typical of like, oh, I could get my fudge here. I could get my root beer here. I see the same 
typical people that I see at every con because they sell the same kind of merchandise everywhere, right. whether it be for comic book, horror, sci-fi, or action. And they okay. have, and you could see them no matter what because they're gonna have a booth, and that's their that's their lifestyle. They are literally gypsies that go from convention to convention to make their money. I see, right? You know, no, but I think when I said, I mean, in my case, when I said vendors, I'm talking about like big, big time, big yeah. corporate vendors. I would say like those big corporations, like again, Mattel or Hasbro or yeah, you know. Something like that, where you know they they want to be there, where you know where the uh, where the fans because they know that the fans buy their stuff. The other one that you're talking about, like Hot Toys, you always see them with a booth there, but mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, yeah. If you go to uh, well, at the time during that time, Fandemic Tour and like I said, Walker Stalker. If I went to Atlanta, let's say AMC would have their own particular booth. You would have uh, the the Walking Dead store from Sonoy there. Right. Literally, they're huge because everything is based upon that. Uh, there would be the Atlanta film tours because it's local to that particular event. Right. Because uh, they do, well, if you guys know, they film a lot of things between Stranger Things, Marvel, a ton of regular action films. Everything within the town of Sonoy and Atlanta itself, it's a market in it unto itself for uh, people to go to film tours of where they filmed great movies like Demolition Man or Fried Green Tomatoes, Stranger Things, Marvel, but you can't get in there. Uh you know, soon to be demolished The Walking Dead. Right. And things of that nature. But you know, the the thing is is that they're staples within certain areas and you'll see them. Same thing with like San Diego. They do that there as well. Right. And on top of that, since San Diego is so huge and we're coming like what a few weeks away from when they had it originally right and that's the biggest they had so many giveaways there because they are that huge now terrificon isn't that huge it's just very big on the eastern coast because it's done at a casino right and people could you know easily just gamble away but it's <laughs> the the venue itself is huge and I've been there before where it was back to back and you, you felt like a sardine in a can. Right. That's what I was people. saying, that this didn't feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. It, this was because it was the first in a long time. Right. So I knew it wasn't going to be as huge, but it was at least fun to walk around. You know, you didn't have to walk, walk by and then, you know, God forbid, you, you have your butt pinched by somebody as you're walking past them. But that, you know. I've only had that happen maybe three times in my life, <laughs> but <laughs> probably because they were trying to pinch the girl's ass that was walking past me. At least dressed and they got, and they got you. They got me. <laughs> but to me, it was nice and casual this time. It wasn't uh, over. It wasn't overcrowded or packed, but it was casual in the sense that you could have a good time. Now, mind you, right. yes, COVID standards. They had some actors there. Adrian Pilecki had her mask on. I saw a few other actors and actresses having their masks on as well, but right. that's to their discretion. No, uh, but I'm saying so. Like, if you, if you, um, I read that for San Diego that they were telling everybody they had to wear a mask. Oh, and really? People, yeah, and people were very nice, you know, and they put on a mask or whatever it is, but that everybody had to have, a mask, and everybody did. So, but you know, we're in you know in uh, connecticut so <laughs> yeah well it's different no it's, it, different it's dependent on the location yeah at that point and it's really the discretion of people yeah no so, absolutely uh, i think in california now it's it's that thing that's probably why adrian palecki was wearing her mask she got so used to it a lot of people did could you know? be no exactly but yeah no so that was uh yeah those were my critical thoughts were because i just again i haven't been to one in 12 years <laughs> But, but and the last one I to went go. to, yeah, they're fun to go to. And the last one I went to is it wasn't something you know. It was a huge convention, you know, the com you know Comic Con in New York. So that's the only thing I could actually uh, relate to that. And mm. the one, one, the other one that I could relate to was when remember the uh, Lost in Space when they came out with the movie with uh, John. Uh, what is it with um the guy from Friends? Yes, him. Oh my goodness, that was or, ancient. That was like nineteen ninety nine or something like that. So I went to a convention and I remember meeting 
the original uh, oh, cast. Cast one of the original cast. Uh, okay, who played uh, what's his name? Um, not the father, but the other guy. Uh, oh, uh, I know who you're talking West, about Don West. I think it. No, I, 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 you know, he he was the love interest of you know of uh, one of the girls. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet the original actor who was actually who was at the time a gym teacher. Because he even told me, he goes, oh, yeah, you know, I teach, uh, you know, physical ed and stuff like that. It's, uh, so in high school, you know, but I get to do these, you know, these things, too. And when they yeah. call me for, for an opportunity for, you know, to do a movie, I was like, I was shocked. But I was like, OK, sure. Huh. So that's the only one <laughs> that I remember was uh, that one. And I was there because I was trying to look for like a few books <laughs> that I wanted or something like that. But yeah, they're very well known. I, I kind of call the con that I go to, I used to, I went regularly from 94 all the way up until presently, but I sporadically go now. It's called Chill Theater Convention, and that's found in, in New Jersey. Mm. And they usually don't do anything very specific. A lot of what they do is very nostalgic. So oh, okay. I got to see Adam West, nice. Julie Newmar, and, right. you know, the boy Wonder himself. I got to see them one year, but they also had, you know, Lost in the Lost in Space cast there as well. You know, cool. uh, what was it Angela Cartwright's uh, sister who was in the show was there. The guy you were talking about was like the captain of the ship, not the father of the of the uh, family. Well, right, exactly. It was, um... and then I got to meet Bill Mooney too, who played the son. Oh yeah, I remember him. So, yeah. yeah, so I got to meet him. Those those are particular ones that that is like genre specific and usually I call them nostalgic cons because you'll laugh because you Ralph and I went to go see uh, of all things Corey Feldman at one of these things. <laughs> okay, so I got to meet. Uh, I was there literally just to go see three guys who portrayed Godzilla in suit acting, but. <laughs> Corey Feldman was there. So I was like, fine, I'll go see Corey Feldman. But he was like, all right, uh, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go see the Godzilla guys. He goes, well, I'm going to go see Hulk Hogan. So that's why it was more nostalgic. So he went to go meet Hulk right. Hogan. And that was a, that was his claim to fame. Like, I got to go see Hulk Hogan. Right, right. I was like, all right, well, I have to go see Godzilla. So I went to, I saw the <laughs> guy who played the original Godzilla. I saw the one who played it for the next 10, 15 years after him. And in the, in the newer one, right. They have not had a suit actor since then. So I got to meet all three. Oh, so wow. I was happy okay. about that. So, but the thing <laughs> is, is that, yeah, you know, Hogan, Hogan will still do these things and, you know, as older as he gets. But yeah, that's what Ralph wanted. But, uh, you'd get to go see those things, and right, I got to right. go see Lost in Space, the, those people, but it was a consistent thing, you could tell. But as people do get older, you're like, oh, sorry, they passed away. Yeah, no, exactly. You know? And it's just like, just like we were mentioning before, it's like with comic creators, you do get those celebrities who do pass away, and it's like, wait a minute, I waited online for three hours last time, and I never got an autograph. No, exactly. Like, and, and it's funny who we actually, you know, um, think is important because mm -hmm. of how we are fans. Yeah. And so a good, I was just thinking about this because um, on Disney Plus, they're giving this really great, great docuseries um, about ILM and how it started. Yep. And, you know, and where it's going and stuff like that. And, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, uh, since I used to do animation and stuff like that and, and it was a graphic artist, those were my, you know, the people I looked up to, Dennis Muir, and, you know, yeah. you had, uh, you know, all these great special effects guys. Yeah, Phil or Tippett. Or, or Phil Tippett, or, you know, or things like that. So, yeah. uh, Ken Ronson, all these, these are all, like, legends in that field, right? So, when I used to go to that graphic artist convention, ILM will have a booth, <laughs> and they were, of course, you know, uh, taking applications because you will go there definitely, you know, to network and to sometimes meet the, these big companies and see, you know, go to the recruiting part. But ILM yeah. had lines of just people with their portfolios and stuff like that. And when they would give, you know, these <laughs> big, um, all of a sudden you'll, you might see on one of them that maybe Dennis Muren comes out and talks about, certain effect shots and things like that and and to us we're the fans of these people you know and we're like yep. oh wow it's dennis Muren, or oh wow it's you know and it's it's interesting how 
all these cons, you have fans for everything. You know, yes. you had, you know, you wanted to go see your Godzilla guys. Yeah. Ralph wanted to go see, you know, Hulk Hogan, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. So uh, everybody has a fan on something, you know, so it's, it's, everybody's goes to these cons, right? No matter what type of a con it is. Exactly. Because they're a fan of something. And to them, whoever's great in that, that's their celebrity. Well, they, they have these other cons that are out there that a lot of people don't get. But unless you're in that particular industry, I when I worked in audio engineering, there was the AES convention, the Audio Engineering Society convention, and they would have right. it at the Javits. I went for like five years straight, and I got to meet <laughs> a lot of my engineering heroes and uh, producing heroes, a lot of which I was taught through, through trade school. Right, so right. Sometimes your mouth could drop, but... I went there to play with all the big toys that would I would never own. Oh yeah, no, exactly. And, and that's that was the whole point of those particular conventions. So not only you do get to meet other legends that are there that are like producers, engineers, and uh, and gold record engineers at that too. Right. You get to meet and talk with them, but you get to play with the toys too. And sometimes you get that with within these conventions as well. Because they do have interactive features also. Right. Like uh, like with Walker Stalker and Pandemic, they had things where you could walk through and shoot a zombie or something. Or you could do a, uh, what would it would be, virtual reality. Where you right, could sit right. there and learn, play the new game of virtual reality of whatever they're trying to promote for EA games or things of that nature. Uh, they do do that, but usually that's on a higher scale. That's usually like San Diego Comic Con, New York Comic Con, and uh, with this, it, it's very much like with Terrificon. It was very more small, structured, more focused towards comics and the con aspect, right? Right. Uh, which I will start with in things that we saw that we liked. So we, we'll go back to cosplayers. Yeah. And before you arrived. I was walking around just getting my feeling and footing. And right away, I see this girl, uh, not a girl, it's a woman and her mm -hmm. husband, and they have two kids. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if you listeners are fans, but uh, I'm a fan of the show. It's called Yellow Jackets. In the particular show, they have this thing called the Antler Queen. So all the girls were crash landed. They. We don't know if they went into cannibalism or not. It's still something that we're <laughs> curious within the first season. But right. there are flashbacks of them having a secret society, one of which where you see a girl with a veil with antlers and some things around her dress that they created, and they called her the Antler Queen. So this woman was dressed that way. I had to take a picture. It was. <laughs> I was like, are you the Antler Queen from Yellow Jackets? She goes, yes, I am. And I'm like... Oh my god, I need to take a picture of you because my friends just love this. <laughs> the fact that I've not seen that debuted at all at a convention since I've right. gone back. I was like, I showed it to my friends through it on a group message. They're like, oh my god, somebody's actually doing it. And then the the one thing that they all say, state out of it too is, you know, out of that group of friends that I have for that particular group, they're like, they need to have a yellow jackets convention. I'm like, it only had one season, kids. <laughs> Yeah, one relax. season. Relax. <laughs> hold off a bit. But mind you, since Yellow Jackets has come out, Christina Ricci, uh, Juliette Lewis, and a, a few of the other actresses have gone to conventions, and they are crowded. Oh, I imagine so. They yeah. are crowded, so it's become a such a huge thing. Now, mind you, I tried to get Christina Ricci's thing before, like a, an autograph or a picture. Uh, Sean Clark, who I'm so glad you clarified this. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> he said uh, I tried to get Christina Ricci's thing, and uh, then you autograph her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I wanted her thing. Oh no, I'm not a stalker, everybody. <laughs> no, uh, no. Sean Clark, who does representation for uh, for uh, celebrities and stuff like that for these events, who I know and met and seen a few times. I had bumped into him at a Monster Mania, and now you're talking. This was three years ago. Right, and they were having um, some. I think they had the craft reunion, so they had Faruza Balk, uh, 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 Robin Tunney, and Nev Campbell, and then uh, Henry Thomas was there too. So I got his autograph, but because Henry was reasonable with his pricing, 
But I said, well, where's Christina? So he goes, come up with me. So we walk up and he goes, dude, it's like 120 bucks. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not doing this. (laughs) I have a good day. See you. Bye. And that was it. (laughs) That was like a lot of money. Now, mind you, there was a line there. So they make their money and talk about nostalgia, but they're coming back. So a lot of these people are do are doing these conventions. They're coming back, right. and they're very nice to their fans. Because in passing, when I walked by, and Sean was just saying, seeing how she was doing, she was like, "Oh hi," and I was like, "Oh hi, I can't afford right. you." <laughs> <laughs> it's like some of us are on, you know, right. a budget, but. Uh, even with the craft girls, I, I just said hello because it was like way out of my budget. No, but oh, yeah. uh, but the thing is, is that it's all coming back, and I, I was it was so cool to have see that when I went to Terrificon, it's like somebody did something of a new show that came out within the pandemic, and now is is right. cosplaying on it. Uh, we also saw Carnage, that guy with the Carnage arms. Yeah, he uh, uh, took a lot of room. <laughs> and uh, there was a girl there dressed as an angel with mechanical angel wings. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, cool. I got. To I see saw her. somebody from uh, what, what was the uh, that Korean uh, show on a uh, net uh, on Netflix that did really uh, well? Um, huh? That they, were, that they were killing people. Oh, <sighs> I know what you're talking about. All, all, uh, all, all over the dead or something. No, 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 no. It's the one that was super popular in uh, on Netflix. I cannot believe I'm actually brain farting Squid on this. Game? Squid Games. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> I'm going to brain fart on this. But there was somebody actually dressed uh, in a with jumpsuit the, with, the, a with a mask. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh, look at that. You know. <laughs> actually, when I went to Pandemic Tour, they were selling those masks. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We all uh, were... We were all thinking it's like maybe we should buy those they're only like 30 bucks it's like well if we wear them on the flight people will not like us okay (laughs) well you know it's a it's an easy cosplay uh, costume and it um, is and i have to say some of the star wars uh especially on the 501st booth um the uh cosplayers there were uh their costumes were phenomenal yeah they make their own costumes they're uh pretty much a tight-knit bunch when it comes to getting together with their fandom and they do special events for people too they'll right you'll see them at parades you'll see them do uh to support their local neighborhood for anybody that needs help so i i think it's a really good thing it's funny too because you know they're the empire but they're doing good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But thank, so, yeah, thanks to them. But the fact is, is that they're, they're very dedicated and they build and create their own masks and right. they, they keep it very communal. And I think it's, it, it's, and they're very diverse too. And it's worldwide. Holy oh, yes. crap. There's a 501st almost in every country out there. <laughs> yeah. So that's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed seeing that. Uh, I we we got to see Tim Daly too. Yeah, you know. I was just gonna say that I enjoy seeing my old friend Tim Daly. Um, him and I are more like acquaintances. I'm not gonna say that we're like buddy buddies, but you know we know yeah. each other very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, it was just nice, you know, catching up with him. I haven't talked to him in a while since uh, he moved out of the area. But uh, other than that, uh, I asked him the question. Mm-hmm. Um because as you know there's going to be a new batman animated series right correct yeah and i think kevin conroy is coming back for that yes if i'm not mistaken so i asked him i said hey you know seeing as how that's coming back are there any cameos for like superman in that show or something that they approached you about he goes absolutely nothing (laughs) I was like, oh, that sucks, man. <laughs> but I, it was really nice to hear from when we saw the panel for uh, for the Justice League voiceover cast. It was really nice to hear that all of them would come back Yeah, if a new Justice League you know, show came out or something like that. And it was nice to hear Tim say that he would definitely do it because he's a fan, too. So he's... Uh, yeah. And... And this was his first, uh, as you, as I don't know if, I mean, I don't know how many people are aware, but this was his first con ever. Yes. So it's, I, I was very surprised 
because Kevin Conroy goes to these things, you know, <laughs> like all the crazy time. <laughs> all the time. People like Mark <laughs> Hamill yeah. also go to these things, you know, so you would think, you know, and a lot of people who have done um, voiceover work for DC or Marvel for cartoons or, you know, animated movies or anything like that, they have always shown up to these cons mm-hmm. uh, multiple times. Yes. So when he told me that this was his first time, I'm like, are you? I even told him, I said, Tim, do you even realize how much of a legend you are in <laughs> this arena here? <laughs> I mean, and and it was proof when you see, you know, um, people just come up to him and and how they, uh, they express describe, their feelings towards express him. Express their yeah. feelings yeah, towards yeah. that. And it was actually, you know, I was like, oh, okay, this is, uh, you know, I mean, he's a great actor and stuff like that. Yeah. And it was like, there's a friend of mine and they're like gushing, uh, you know, to him, like. Emotion. Like, like, yeah. Like I very emotional. And, yeah. yeah. And it's just like, wow. Okay. And yeah. I told him, I said, you know, I asked him, I said, are you ever going to do one of these again? And he goes, well, Here's the thing. Um, I'm still an actor, so that's my first gig. Yeah. So, but I I wouldn't mind doing it again. He said because he didn't realize how much you connect with your audience out there and Correct. the fans compared yep. to you know what he does, which there is usually no fan interaction. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was true. It was like, wow, yeah, no, you're right. You know, and I think he saw that, and I think you know it was a a kind of a a cool experience for him. Is he going to do more? I hope he does. I mean, I don't, I mean, yeah. again, he, he might be, he might be a friend, but he, he was not going to tell me anything. <laughs> no, <Nah>, well, <laughs> it's all- also too, I, I kind of got that from the, when we were talking to him that he was just like, eh, I said, this is your first one, very first one. He goes, yeah. And I'm like, so how does it feel? And he had that look of like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the one thing. He's never done it before. Right. He might do another two or three before he decides, hey, this is not for me. Or he got something out of the experience of with the fans and having that. Because right, a lot right. of the celebrities that are out there, the reason why they do that is because they realized without the fans, they wouldn't have their work. Well, no, of course. So they they feel a sense of obligation to do this. Right. And that... And just to give an example, Jeffrey D. Morgan did this at Fandemic Tour. Uh, originally, they were supposed to have Sebastian Stan there. Sebastian had to cancel due to Marvel commitments. So they overbooked. And then during Fandemic Tour, within that weekend, they're like, well, people are getting upset. You know, they're canceling. They're ready to leave. They flew out here. What could we give them to supplement? And basically, they were supplementing Jeffrey D. Morgan. So Jeff wound up sitting there for two days straight, hours upon hours on end, only having like maybe two two smoke breaks between each. Wow. Uh, as well as getting like a few bites in throughout the day and then going to sleep and then coming back and doing it again. And a lot of people were not happy still with that. But regardless, the man was there for the fans because right. they couldn't get that other actor that they wanted to see. But when the con said, hey, we'll cut this off so that way you could see, you know, we'll take a percentage off. And then you go see this person, please stay. Right. And then they get to see Jeff. And uh, he was a trooper. And the, that's the, awesome. And the fact that you get actors and celebrities that do that. Because they do love the fans and they take the time with the fans. And Jeff, Norman Reedus, uh, I think actually The Rock is the same way too. Dwayne Johnson is the same way right. at these events. And they just like to take time with their fans because without them, they feel this is for them. And right. they feel the same thing. And if you talk to Jeffrey Dean Morgan himself or Dwayne Johnson or any of those people, they're fans, too, of the medium that they're covering. Like, look at Black Adam. Look at uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He just loves The Walking Dead. But, yeah, you know, he would love to be back into Supernatural or even in The Boys because he talks about that all the time. Like, I'd really? be on The Boys in a heartbeat. <laughs> uh, but they'd have to find him a, a character. Right. Things of that nature. But... Honestly, that that's the cool part about that. And when I saw Tim and I saw the frustration and the look in his face, 
I, I thought right away, it's like, give him a few more chances with this. He just has to have the right publish publicist to uh, promote it, figure out his time and schedule. Right. Because he could literally do one or two days. He doesn't have to do the whole weekend. And that way, if it's scheduled that way, a bulk of your fans will show within those, those particular days. And then right, right. you'll feel, okay, this was worth my time. Yeah, no, I, like I said, I hope he continues to do it. I hope, uh, and like I told him, I said, you you know, you are a legend in this, in this, you know, in this because you played Superman. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you're, uh, but one thing he did say, you know, which I thought was great. And it's funny how when he said it, it triggered the, like the, the videos that I have seen of other celebrity, big time celebrities that are like, you know. Yeah. All of a sudden go to like let's say Comic Con and they get announced into like one of the Marvel panels, right? Or whatever, because they're <laughs> part of a Marvel movie. And when they go out there, you like the crowd just goes insane. Erupts. Yep. And they don't even realize what kind of fans people have out there. You know, it's like, oh shit, I can't believe that the part I, you know, I'm in is gonna be is gonna impact so many people or they're so excited about it. Um and it's crazy how, you know, so I think a lot of these celebrities sometimes, you know, they don't, since they don't have that much interaction exactly. with their fans, or better yet, they'll even have some, but not a lot. And maybe some are just crazy. So then, of course, they, <laughs> they become a little more like, I don't want to, you know, meet any fans kind of Be thing. Her, but, yeah, yeah. But I think these cons actually, you know, well, bring into perspective of like, oh, wow, I can't believe that they're so, you know, I'm still remembered and I'm still, you know, I still count in people's eyes and things like yeah, that. So they do. So, they do. and, you know, and like I said, you know, like, you know, and you, you know, you've, you've met Tim before. He's a sweetheart of a guy. I mean, oh, yeah. he is one of, like, I've met a lot of celebrities in the past, but he is one of the few, few people that, just a generous heart, just a very nice person. And, yeah. and I think uh, from what I have known him personally, um, and I think a lot of fans out there got to, you know, at least see that part of him. Oh yeah. He was very down to earth. And I yeah. think it, it, once uh, uh, we weren't there at the very beginning, but I think once he saw the people at the panel for the justice league, yeah. I think that's what really yes. fired up within him going, wow. Right. And he probably had a big, Applause yeah. for him coming out oh, of on, on to the to the panel itself, and and again, you could tell, of course, this was his first one because you know he the way he was up in the panel, you know he he didn't play to the crowd the way uh, Kevin John, Conroy, Kevin yeah, Kevin Conroy, Conroy did. <laughs> like he loves to play to the crowd and just you know starts to do the voice and people go crazy over that. So you know, so I think this is something that. I, I, He'll learn it, and you can, yeah, he'll <laughs> learn it. But I think that you know, not even all the other ones who have done it probably you know go as crazy as Kevin Conroy does. Oh, like Phil uh, Lamar plays up the comedic aspect. Does he? He uh, was on Mad TV, right. so he knows okay. how to play that. Yeah, and then the, the woman who plays Wonder Woman, who voices Wonder Woman, she is just a true voice actress, so right. she knows. And there's like maybe two, uh, like Ashley. I Eckstein, who uh, voices uh, Ahsoka, Ahsoka Tano, and right. uh, uh, Clone Wars and stuff, she knows that. As petite and small this woman is, even though her yes. husband's like a big baseball player and <laughs> really cool, she knows her celebrity so well and knows how to control an audience and knows what they want to hear. Yeah. And she could do the voice easily to a kid and the kid will like break down going, I love you. Because my friend <laughs> Alex, his daughter, Lucy, got to meet her and they got a picture with her. And that was at uh, uh, Philly Fan Expo. And right. I, when I got to meet her, she was so wholesome, very down to earth. I was like one of the last few people there to meet her. I got a picture with her, got her an autograph. And and very rarely I do, do get an autograph from a uh, like a voice actor for uh cartoons i would definitely get one from tim i didn't get anything that day uh, i don't even dare ask him <laughs> i know <laughs> he's a friend i can't do that to him <laughs> i know i know some people actually yeah it's like you get to meet these people and they're like really are you kidding me you know me 
<laughs> so uh, yeah, but I, you know, Tim doesn't know me as well as he does <laughs> you, right. so it would have been like, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, <laughs> it's just like another twenty five bucks, sure. <laughs> and uh, and one of the biggest things that I saw at the con, which it affected you uh, tremendously was <laughs> the Thundercat sword. Oh, the yeah. Sword of it's, it's one of the impulse things that I had to do. <laughs> uh, we were just, you were looking at swords and you got me skeptical. I was like, oh, I want to look at this. I want to do this katana and I want to do this. I'm like, I'm like, oh, my goodness. This can't be metal. <laughs> it's metal. I'm like, look at the price. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? And, and I'm like, it was, you thought it was aluminum. I'm like, this has got to be aluminum. And they're like, no, look at it. It's no, this is uh, stainless steel. Stainless steel. And I'm like, you know what? I put I it like, down and I <laughs> thought about it. And then I was like, and you, you're looking at me. And I was like, you know I what? I looked I'm at it. I looked at it. I said, Mark, <laughs> it's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked it up and I was like, fine. And I was like, all right. And then the guy goes, well, the guy who voiced Lion was down there. Just, I was like, all right, fine. So I got it signed. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, a, it's a great, great piece. And um, I remember the second day when I went, you didn't go on the second day, but the second day that I went, so they, I guess they got more uh, those Thundercat uh, swords in, but then the guy who voiced Lionel wasn't there. And I'm like, I, why am I buying the sword if I can't have it signed by him? <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, especially with the, when I spoke to the guy who sold me the sword, because they do replicas for a right. lot of things, not just cartoons or anime or like video games too. Uh, when I mentioned I had a machete signed by Steve Dash. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a couple of other Jasons from the, the Friday the 13th series, his face went like, whoa, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's a real machete, but that was in the 90s. or Actually, early 2000s <laughs> when I got that. But still, it's you can't like do actual weaponry. <laughs> it, well, it was sharp. It still is. I was surprised with the metal, uh, the metal swords in um, at the con. At the con. Yeah. You know, you usually they they. Uh, if they have like sheaths, they right. would zip tie them closed, or they have to get <laughs> checked in at a certain point by security. Because you saw the security we had to get into, you got you went through a metal detector. They had to go through your bags. They had to do yeah, no, exactly. Stuff. So I guess you could get weapons in the, in the show. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. No problem. You had to get you know. I guess you could get weapons <laughs> in the show. Or from the show, you just can't bring them to the show. Yeah, so you could do Highlander <laughs> out in the garage park. So you could play, you yeah. know, the Kurgan and Highlander out in the garage <laughs> if you get a good sword. As long as it's done in the garage, because it's not in the, the, the hall. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Uh... <laughs> I was actually very surprised on that. No, they were, like I said, there were like there were some really cool vendors. Yeah, uh, like I guess because this is uh, my second one in I don't know fifteen years. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's say I'm comparing it to a behemoth like Comic Con is, which yeah, I, sh I shouldn't, you know. But you know, once you get exposed to that, that's what you're thinking, and you go into these things, and all of a sudden I'm gonna see, I might see this, I might see this, and it's mm -hmm. really. This is more s such a scale down because even uh, even Tim told me he goes how big is Comic Con? <laughs> you know, and, and I looked and I was like Tim, it's about twenty times bigger than this. <laughs> it's like it's gigantic. You'll see it and you would just either think it's the most amazing thing you ever saw or freak out and just sleeve screaming. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it gave him a taste. Yes. Literally. So this basically, because he lives close by, he lives in New York City. Uh, at one point, he did live in Connecticut. But now it gives him a little bit of a taste of what it feels like to go to these conventions. Correct. He doesn't necessarily have to go to the huge ones. Now, if he booked that, amazing. Yeah. That way, uh, you'll he'll make out like a, like a bandit with, <laughs> with whatever money he makes for the weekend. And be coming back with a smile, grin to grin, you know, ear Oh, my ear. God. I mean, the amount of people that he will see and connect with is just amazing. Yeah. So, but, you know, I'm glad he did something of this stature first before he jumped into something like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> at least it, it's known that that was his first. There's actually a, uh, uh, of all things, I looked at it in Chilla Theater's uh, fan uh, Facebook page. 
they announce already because it's coming out in October. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have uh, the people from Scream or the new Scream that came out recently. Okay. Uh, if you remember, there was a girl. Uh, she was originally in the Sandlot. I'm forgetting her name, but she was an adult actress. She was in Scream, uh, Scream Four, and then they brought her back for the most recent Scream. She died. Sorry, spoilers, oh. but she died. <laughs> but she. It, it's her first convention appearance ever just like tim was so you do get those every once in a while it's like oh this is their very first convention ever they've never done anything like this right so to see tim do that that to me was like okay it it opens up gates of new possibilities for him if like because sometimes people are not acting all the time right during the pandemic they weren't acting so you have to rely on you know other means of uh, making your money or just getting out there to the public so i i thought that was pretty cool i had a great time you had a great interaction too while we were at tim's table too because you didn't realize who you bumped into and i already knew who it was <laughs> yeah well he is the way tim does like uh what do you say he goes joe this is rob rob this is uh joe, <laughs> joe. and i'm like oh I, yeah i know who you are <laughs> Uh, it's Joey Pantaleone, Joey, Joey Pants. Joey, yeah, he's a he's a character though. Man. The Goonies, the Matrix. Yeah, he's a a, I wanted movies. to ask him. I was like, dude, why did you? It was so wrong. They killed you in Bad Boys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. the hell was that about? <laughs> yeah, it was. But his uh, character was great on that. He he's a tripping in himself, but he's done them so many times. He's so used to it, but. I, I noticed this among celebrities and actors that go to these events. They get in groups of people that they like, they know. Right. They've hung out with before, know outside of not only the convention, but also the celebrity community. They go to dinner or something. Right. So, of course, he was just like, oh, well, we could go to that particular restaurant. It's like, oh, she doesn't like Italian? No, no, no. Everybody loves Italian. <laughs> so, it, it's just like him just being himself. Yeah. And no, he, he was he's like, great. And him bumping into both of us, saying, hey, was I right? I'm like, yeah, you were right. It was Batman 66. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's like, but yeah, no, it's it, funny. You just got to get wrapped up and not get your uh, face go, oh, my God. <laughs> it's it, it took me by surprise because I, when I got to Tim's table, I didn't look around. To, to anybody who, else that was there. Any, right. So I didn't know who was there. And then mm-hmm. it was later where I started walking around and I noticed some of the, you know, some of the actors that were there. Uh, well, actually, an actor that came out in, I th- I believe, in the first Karate Kid. He was there. He's done, I guess he does. Oh, the some, third one. Yeah. The guy uh, who played the bad guy, uh, Matt Barnes. In the, yes. Uh, the third it's Karate the third Kid. one. You're right. Yeah. It's the third one. Right. <laughs> uh, and he, uh, he, um, he was there, you know, like there, there's a whole bunch of people there, you know, that, and you're like, oh, okay, now I see everybody that's here. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, re- I didn't realize that uh, Joe was right next to Tim <laughs> because he just popped out of nowhere. He just kind of like, you know, uh, he hugged Tim and then I recognized who he was. I was like, well, holy shit, where did he come from? <laughs> he went right there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I was like, oh, he has a booth right next to him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it's fun to see that, though, those relations while you're at the con itself because yeah. you don't realize who knows who. And it's No, fun. exactly. No, exactly. That's exactly true. I remember uh, Tim um, – uh, he was doing a show off Broadway with his uh, with his sister, uh, Tyam, I think is her name, right? Tyne Daly, yeah. Tyne Daly, uh, and a phenomenal show that was. And uh, so he gave me free tickets to that. I went with my girlfriend to see him, and then we met him after the show. And in the uh, same room is like uh, Kevin Bacon and his wife, <laughs> and, and my girlfriend is the one that actually you know pointed that. I was like, isn't he in movies over there? And I look over, <laughs> I go, yeah, that's Kevin Bacon. <laughs> 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 but they know that you know tim and him knew each other very well and as yeah. a matter of fact tim told me one time that um because i also met charlie cox from uh daredevil mm-hmm. and so uh, and i just told tim one day that we were talking i was like it just seems like there's a bunch of superheroes here in uh in connecticut and he goes 
what are you talking about? I was like, well, there's you who played Superman. <laughs> and then there's Daredevil by Charlie, you know, Charlie, Cox. Charlie Cox. He goes, And then he goes like, oh, yeah, Charlie. He was here the other day, you know, uh, having dinner with us. I was like, <laughs> but he knows each other, man. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so, but so. It, it's funny, too, because they're not much aware of what the other person's been doing. Yeah, right. it's like uh, Charlie was most notably known from like Boardwalk Empire and stuff like that right, before right. he got the Daredevil gig. And my parent, my mother knew that because she saw an episode of Daredevil and go, "Oh, that's that guy from Boardwalk Empire." <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, you know, it depends on what your fandom is and what you like. Right. But uh, on top of that, a lot of the the people who are celebrities that are friends it just they like, uh, I remember that. It's yeah. kind of like uh, somebody I knew. It's like the. Uh, they were asked to uh, fill in for James Hatfield when he burnt his arm in his face or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it went to John Marshall, who is his, you know, James's guitar backup. Right. They asked Bobby to do it. And Bobby's like, well, I don't really know the songs. They asked him first because Bobby and James was really good friends. But the thing is, Bobby's like, I don't go out there and learn all my friends' songs. And like, I might, I listen to them, but I, do I know them all? No, <laughs> but it's kind of the same thing. It's like, yeah, I'm a fan, but I don't know everything that they do. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's because I'm sure like, you know, and I've told actually like my roommates and stuff like that, which or I'm going to probably tell them. Um, let's try to minimize the work talk at the house because we already work with each other. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you live with each other and we talk about work and it just never goes away. So I can imagine that celebrities sometimes are the same. It's like, listen, I don't want to talk about work. <laughs> Let's talk about food. Let's talk about food. I went to, <laughs> I went to Italy and I ate this. <laughs> well, I noticed that a lot about celebrities too over the years as I encounter them and talk to them. Right. The ones that they do in, interact in front of you and you go, oh, wow. <laughs> and it, they talk about food a lot yes. so they like their food and their wine so that's a thing to, do, to be like it's like can we change the subject yeah let's not talk about work let's talk about awesome that video game <laughs> yes we'll do that or we'll talk about a movie or something like that yeah exactly that's that's all you can just change the subject uh, to something that's uh decent yeah but yeah, we we uh, overall, if you guys didn't, li all you listeners didn't understand, we had a great time. We had a great time going and having fun there. Uh, is this something that I would promote? Definitely. Uh, if you're in the area, and actually because of where Terrificon is held every year, which is in Mohegan Sun and Uncansville, Connecticut, uh, it's literally a stone a stone's throw away from Rhode Island. Right at, at certain points. Uh, my friend Greg could have came, but he was kind of busy with the uh, family. He's got two small kids. My friend Jillian was away at that point, too. She would have loved it, so I'm going to try to recommend it again. But I highly recommend it to anybody else. A lot of people usually come from, like, uh, New York City, New Jersey. It's still, like, maybe a three-hour ride for them, drive. Right. If you get a hotel, there are hotels there. You can do that. But uh, the best thing for you to do, if you're really interested, all you have to do is go to their social media, which would be at It's Terrificon, or on their Facebook page, which would be Facebook.com slash Terrificon. So check that out. They have, a, you know, pictures and everything that follows up from the weekend. So look at those pictures. And I'm sure they had cosplayers, everybody tagged. Yeah, the, no, the people great. I want to point out that were out there that I got to enjoy definitely was Tim Daly. We got to talk to Kirk Manley, my friend Kirk, who does the podcast artwork for Panels to Pixels podcast, Pyrocore Entertainment, as well as Adrenaline Cinema podcast. So I was able to get to uh, talk to uh, Kirk for a little bit, and uh, he had like some cool stuff there. So keep in mind with Kirk when he does these conventions, he has particular posters that he'll make for that particular convention and that includes uh connecticut comic-con right. as well as terrific uh, uh uh fan expo fandemic tour whatever he's doing so check that out if you you know all, 
everybody knows, just go to the notes in the podcast notes, and you can see Kirk Manley stuff there as well. Yeah, but, no, I, I definitely encourage people to go, and I definitely, you know, it's... I'm I'm glad that these things are up and running. I mean, for people like us who are fans and always been fans since we were kids, um, it's a place for us. You know, yeah. it's a place that you know celebrates you know this type of a uh, lifestyle and this type of a uh, fandom that you know that we have loved all our lives. And you're not the only one out there, you know. So <laughs> there's other fans just like you, and it's a great way to connect with people, great way, you know, to uh, make lifelong friends. But at the same time, great way to support either your comic book, you know, local comic book shops, which you have a lot of them that, you know, yeah, go there. But also, you know, you get to f connect, hopefully, with either an artist that you've always been a fan of or, you know, or a celebrity that you've always been a fan of. You know, you can meet them in person. And it's just a great way to... uh a great community. So yeah. definitely yeah. support your cons. Yeah, definitely do that. And also, if you're a comic book fan, uh, the one thing that I take away, and I forgot to mention it, uh, I got three comic books graded for the weekend that nice. I've been wanting to do, CGC graded. And at that con, they actually did a, good, a cool deal for the three comics. It only cost me $130. And that's to uh, kind of like, uh, what they call them iron, like ironing and then packaging rating and then putting them into the plastic content so uh yeah no I, it's uh, really cool i thought it would have been like 50 bucks each but total price was 130 bucks and that's including shipping to me after all said and done right whereas before it would have cost you like 180 bucks or something like that huh so, so i thought uh i thought that was a great deal uh your your comic guy rob was saying that was like an amazing deal yeah so I did that that weekend. I was my, it was my plans to do that. I did Dark Knight issue number one from Frank Miller, which I've had since I was like 12, 13. And then I got the Secret Wars issue number eight mm. done as well. Right. And here's Negan, which is a fairly newer comic, but uh, I got the gold label one, which is very hard to come by. So unfortunately, Mr. JDM has not signed it, but... The cool thing about that, and a little bit of tidbit of information when you're getting this stuff CGC graded, if they do authorization or authentication on site at a con, when you get something signed, have somebody there to verify it. So when it does go out, you get the full value with the right. signature. Otherwise, it's just a scribble on a book. Yeah. That's why I <laughs> took a picture of... Uh... Oh, the guy who uh, <laughs> who did the voice for Lionel while he was signing your uh, your sword. I wanted you to have a record <laughs> that he was actually him signing. You know, so <laughs> yeah, much appreciated. But I don't know if I'm like parting with that anytime soon. It's gonna go up there with my Snake Eyes sword and my well, you uh, know, Safari sword. I'm <laughs> sure that the day you do get, you know, you'll be glad you had those pictures. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, so somebody like, hey, three hundred dollars. <laughs> exactly no i i never had anything uh certified or anything like that um no i did i had a i had a spy uh a cat woman by uh adam hughes i'm a big adam hughes fan um uh, i try to collect every comic book that he has ever done which i started about a few years ago and it became very expensive because i started from the you know from the entry level stuff now I'm getting into the more higher and stuff that he has put out there so I'm dishing out more money for uh, some of his <laughs> some of his stuff but I mean yeah no I, I'm a big fan of his uh and um and I wish I would have I wish I would have just bought more more of his stuff to get certified but I do have one of Catwoman and that one even though it's only an eight but it's a very sought out uh, sought after uh, cover and i was like oh okay very cool so yeah no i didn't realize that they did that at the con so next time i'm definitely going to probably uh bring a few uh things to uh, get graded myself yeah it makes sense to do that to me i i this was the first time i thought about it and i had to go dig and uh according to that you actually were looking for certain ones that were cgc graded but it's very much on the aspect of what i was trying to tell you if you see something you gotta get it then and then. yes i missed out on two great uh graded um comic books one of them was alpha flight number one and then the other one was um i believe it was uh the first i think the first comic book of uh george perez doing wonder woman 
Yes. And they were like 50 bucks each, man. And I was, I cannot believe. I thought, oh, I'll wait. You know, I'll wait later. And they were gone very quickly. Uh, I, I really, really, uh, I really regret that one. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, it's one of those things. Is like cash is very important at these conventions. Keep that in mind. Correct. And if you do see it, you make that decision right away, whether yay or nay. Yeah. And the best thing is, is if you really want it, try to make that happen right away. Yeah. Because you won't see it again for that particular price. And uh, I think you said the next day when you went on Sunday, <laughs> the Alpha Flight was, <laughs> was like $100 somewhere else or something like that. It was $180 with another vendor. And I was like, get out of here. For the Seriously. same grading, too. I was like, a I nine. It was a nine point something, yeah. That which was that was uh, what the uh, Alpha Flight was. Yeah, they they wanted like one hundred and eighty bucks for it or something like that. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what I was saying. Some of the vendors, I think, like somebody was telling me, it's like um, this year's some of the wall books, what they call wall books. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of them didn't have prices on them too, ladies and gentlemen. They didn't have yeah, prices, actually. And from what they were telling me, it was like, yeah, a lot of those books were still expensive. They were, they weren't doing anything to you know. To make it, you know, more affordable for <laughs> certain yeah. people, you know. So, because if not, I would have came out with a lot more stuff. But mm. I mean, the second day, I got to buy a lot of like, uh, I'm a Adam, like I said, I'm an Adam Hughes fan. I'm also a Terry Dotson fan, so I got to get some Terry Dotson covers that I wanted to get for a while. And so, yeah, I spent uh, a little more than I should have, but you know, <laughs> that's what happens with these things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, keep your mind during a convention. Be prepared. Make a list. And then comfortable shoes. Here's what I would say for a first time person going out there: comfortable shoes, ibuprofen, and uh, and Food. cash and water. Lots of cash. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that just about covers everything that we had for our terrific con review. So, uh, just to let you guys know, still know, to submit your feedback, we can be heard on it. Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. If ratings are available, please do give us a rating or a review on one or all of those platforms if you can. You can check out our website at panels to pixels podcast.com, our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter, and that would be Twitter at panels to pixels, panels the number two and pixels. If you have any feedback, just send it to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. So panels. Two is spelled out T O and pixels as well as the number one at gmail.com. So there you can just email us or just record yourself and send that as an attachment and we'll play it right on the podcast. We can be found on YouTube and all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels Podcast. If you're there, just you know, subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like what we do. Honestly, it's just the podcast, but it's played on YouTube. But there will be interviews as well that are video. So if you do that, you get to see my ugly mug or whoever's doing the interview <laughs> and uh, have fun with that. Yeah, if you do choose to search panels to pixels, you might get Josh, who looks a lot cuter than I am. He's got the nice long hair and British accent, but that's not us. <laughs> uh, you could... Uh, we like for everybody to check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. Uh, we highly recommend them all. Wilhelm with Ben Beck, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check them all out there with their links. And uh, coming up, well, obviously, by the time you get this, I would already have put out Umbrella Academy Season 3, Episode 1. Steve and I are going to continue to do that until we get into She-Hulk at the end of the month of August. So uh, check that out and when those are out too. If you love what we're doing on Umbrella Academy, do please submit in some feedback as well as She-Hulk. Or what you're anticipating for She-Hulk. Because I know I am. Because just as Rob mentioned before, Charlie Cox, he's going to be in it. Yes, no, that's true. <laughs> so uh, check that out there. Uh, and where else can listeners hear us? So, Rob, wh where can they hear you? Uh, I am on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. Uh, so, yeah, you could definitely uh, catch me there. As a matter of fact, you and I just uh, finished doing one of our uh, one of our episodes there, uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness review. 
Yep. So yeah, definitely check us there. But hey, yeah, we definitely want to hear from you guys. Uh, you know, like, hey, what what's been your experience on a con, and you know, what's the best? You know, was there a celebrity that you met that you know really uh, um, you always wanted to meet or something like that? So yeah, give us your give us your feedback on you know what what cons have you been to, and you know, and your experience, your experience on that, and you know, yeah. maybe hopefully one day we could see you in the con. <laughs> you know, so. yeah, yeah, we're walking around there with our uh, shirts <laughs> on for our podcast, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you can see me a mile away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, well. Where can you listen to us hear me other than here? Well, you could hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Power Core Entertainment Network. And Steve, who is my co-host on Panels to Pixels, he and I just finished up Predator from 1987. So we covered Predator 1987, but we are going to continue on with doing Prey, which just recently came out on Hulu, and it's gotten really good reviews. So we Yeah, I just saw it yesterday. It. Yeah, I... I'm going to be watching it again and having good uh, fun with that because it really intrigued my interest and I had a good time with it the first time. I really want to narrow down my thoughts. So uh, Steve and I are going to be covering both Predator and Prey and those will be out uh, by the time this reaches you. Escape from the Planet of the Apes will be out that Jerry and I had already covered. So that old lovely 70s apes movie <laughs> <laughs> that we always do. You could also hear me, and by this time this also has come out, I will have done the first episode of Sandman Cast that can be found on the Podcastica Network on House Podcastica's channel. And there, my friend Jamie Dimmick and I cover Sandman that was just released on Netflix. So uh, if you have any thoughts and you're really into the Sandman comic, please do so. Send us our feedback there. I'll just leave everything in the links so that way you guys could check that out there and where to send feedback. Or if not, you just go to House Podcastica on Facebook hmm. and then you can follow it there and then send feedback that way. It's a very much a lot easier. It's a larger network, a lot more people there. But nonetheless, I, I was, wasn't was sure if I was going to put it on panels to pixels or do both. And I figured, <laughs> you know, I don't want to do double the work, so I might right. as well just do it on Jason's. He, and I'm sure people are really interested in to, to hearing that. You could also hear TV podcast industries and their coverage too as well for Sandman as well. So they're good friends of ours as well. So uh, check that out. But you can hear me on Sandman Cast, the Journal Cinema Podcast. So with that, that's our show. And just want to tell everybody, you know, this is the same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. <laughs> and I am Rob. And this was Panels the Pixels. We'll see you on the next panel. Good day, everybody. Yeah.